handling for days. I hope all you guys are having a blessed day. Good afternoon and welcome to the channel if you guys are stopping in for the first time. I am Corey and this is Driveway Demons. I've had a lot of questions over the last couple of months about E85. So today I wanna to talk to you guys about E85, the advantages and disadvantages of going that route over race fuel. A lot of people have asked these questions to me. So today I am going to make that video everything you need to know about E85. Now, before we get into any of that, the mods are beginning for the GT350. I got lots of stuff coming in for the car real soon, so stay tuned for that, guys. However, before I get into any of that, let's go ahead and do a cold start on the Shelby GT350. <laughs> is officially clean. I had some viewers on my previous video say the garage was a mess and it kind of was a mess because I had just finished stripping the Challenger and hadn't gotten around to cleaning everything up. I was kind of in a rush to get everything done but as you guys can see the garage is officially cleaned and organized now. It looks pretty damn good if you ask me. So let's go ahead and talk about E85, the pros, the cons, all the details that you're going to need to know as far as making your decision on race fuel versus E85. There are a lot of people that are skeptical or scared to use E85. There's even performance shops that won't use it, and instead they opt to use VP110, Q16, or MS109. I even know two shops in particular that wouldn't use E85 or tune for it until somewhat recently. E85 is ethanol. It's made from corn. It is 85% ethanol and 15% gasoline. The thing is, is that most people are already pumping ethanol into their gas tanks, if not everybody at this point in time, because when you go to a gas station, you see a little sign that says, may contain up to 10% ethanol. So that means your mixture is 90% gasoline, 10% ethanol. Here's a fun fact, 87 octane is really 85 with ethanol mixed in to increase the octane rating. So let's look at the pros and the cons. There are a few cons to running E85, and I'm going to talk about those first. And the biggest con of E85 is location. Most places don't have E85 readily available, specifically the Northeast, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, Maine, Vermont. There's no E85 up there. It's really hard to get in the New England area, so race fuel is going to be for you. And if you live in New Jersey like me, there's only three places that have it. One is up in central New Jersey at the airport and another location fairly close, so almost the same location, Orange and Newark, and then down here at Mighty Joe's gas station in southern New Jersey. Those are the only three locations for E85 in New Jersey, and New York City doesn't have any. Now, there's quite a few on Long Island. However, E85 is more readily available in Virginia, Delaware, North and South Carolina, Pennsylvania. Those states have abundance of E85. So that is really the biggest con is finding a location for E85. The second con is you have to upgrade a lot of the fuel components like injectors and specifically fuel pumps or boost a pump. The reason for that is E85 ethanol does not create the same thermal energy when burnt or during combustion that 93 does, meaning you have to use like 20 or 30% more to get the same energy out of the combustion. Therefore, you need more of it, so you'll find yourself needing more fuel, therefore needing a boost the pump or a better fuel system. That's a con, as it can cost you a few thousand dollars on some cars, whereas other cars like the Demon or the Red Eye or the GT500 only need a boost the pump, uh, which you can get from MSD or Kenny Bell. So those are only about four or five hundred dollars and they boost the output signal of your current dual fuel pump system. You can get an aftermarket fuel system from Four, F-O-R-E, and they make a dual pump setup for the GT500, Mustangs, Hellcats, all different kinds of cars. The third con to E85 really isn't a big issue here and that is testing. 
it's very imperative that you get yourself a tester. And I have one right here. And I highly recommend testing your E85. If you have a good relationship with your gas station, like I do, then you don't really have to worry about it as much because I get my E85 from Mighty Joe's and they get a shipment in in the summer about every three to four weeks. So I know that I really only have to test my E85 every three or four weeks. However, I do it every time anyway, just to be safe. But you really need to test your E85 because in the summer, you're gonna be ranging between 75 and 90%. I know Mighty Joe's is closer to 88% or 90 in the summer, and it gets to be about 75 to 80 in the fall and winter. Some places like Indiana, Michigan, Ohio, they're gonna get down around 60 or 65% in the winter time. And if you're running forced induction, like say a Hellcat, Demon, Red Eye, GT500, Camaro ZL1, ZR1 Corvette, Z06 Corvette, anything with a supercharger or a turbo really, you gotta be careful because if you tune your car on E85 and 85%, you're running 60%, that's a no-no. In any forced induction car, you do not want to fall below 70%. As long as you're above 70%, specifically in Hellcats, above 70%, you're fine because of the wideband sensors. If your vehicle has a wideband sensor and the tune is very good, you will have no problem over 70% and 75% is even safer. If you test your E85 and it tests below 70%, I highly recommend driving it around very cautiously. Guys, so first things first, you're gonna see here on this little measuring bottle, you're gonna see water goes to the blue line. So you're just gonna fill water to that line. Try to get it as accurate as you can. That's right about where it needs to be. We're gonna go ahead and fill now to the top line with E85, and then we're gonna put the lid on and shake it up real good. Okay, so there we go. You guys can see I got it right here to the top line. Now we're gonna put the cap on and shake it up real good and let it sit for five minutes. Gotta shake it up real good, guys. Now we're gonna let it sit. You guys are gonna be able to watch that separate. Anything over 70% is good enough. Over 75% is definitely a lot better and what I like to go with. So you guys can see where the line is. It is right there and it is E75. So it's 75%. Biofuels are not regulated like gasoline is. Therefore, you don't know exactly what you're getting. It can range anything from 70 to 85 or even 90% in the summer, and it can get really low, such as 60 or 65% in the winter. I have tested E85 in New Jersey, PA, Delaware, Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina, and it turns out the E85 has been pretty damn good. In the summer, I haven't seen anything below 80%, 78 to 80%, so most of the time, you're gonna be fine. I really wouldn't worry too much about that as long as you're testing. Now it's time to get into the things that are great about E85. Let's start off at number one. It's a lot cheaper. Even with the cost of a fuel system running you two or $3,000, you're gonna save a lot of money. A five gallon drum of MS-109 is $78 on average, sometimes even 90. So you're gonna be averaging between 13 and $17 a gallon on MS-109, and it's 105 octane. E85 at 85% is 108. Where I get it in the summertime, Mighty Joe's gas station, it's reading around 90. So I'm getting 109 to 110 octane for 229 a gallon. It's cheaper than 93. And in Delaware, it tested at 88%, which is 109, 110 octane, and I paid $1.99. So it's a lot cheaper. Just off of one fill up in your tank, 16 gallons, you're gonna be looking at about 35 bucks at E85. You're gonna be looking closer to $180 on race fuel. So every time you fill your tank, you're gonna be saving $130. Now in E85, if you test at say 75%, you're looking at about 105, 106 octane. If you test at 85%, you're gonna be looking around 108 to 109. And if you test around 90% like I do, or you run E90 Ignite, you're well into 111 octane. So it's pretty much neck and neck with the race fuels, except instead of spending $15 a gallon, it's costing you $2 a gallon. So you really can't go wrong. If you live anywhere where you have access to E85, I cannot, in good faith and in honest truth, recommend going with race fuel. In fact, if there was no E85 in New Jersey, I would just run 93. It is not worth the hassle to run race fuel. Every single person who has blown their engine on E85 did not test the E85 
and ran significantly lower octane than they thought they were and ended up blowing the engine due to detonation. There are a few people that I know that have blown their engine under these circumstances, motor moves being one of them. And there's quite a few others as well. If you test your E85 and you have a good tuner, you will have zero issues with E85. The E85 is also a lot more friendly for the environment. It burns less carbon dioxide, it burns less emissions into the environment, and it doesn't have a putrid smell when you go catless like race fuel does or regular 93 octane gasoline. E85 has more of a sweet smell. Some people don't like that. E85 is definitely not as disgusting as gasoline as far as smell is concerned, and the environment is going to love you for running E85. There have been a lot of people that have asked me, does E85 ruin your oxygen sensors, your fuel lines, or your injectors, or anything like that? Does it cause any damage in the fuel system? Ethanol is definitely more corrosive to plastics and O-rings than gasoline is. However, if you're not letting your vehicle sit for more than a month or two at a time with E85 in the tank, you're probably okay. If you're running flex fuel, you can always go back and run 93 for a tank or two and then go back to E85. I had E85 in my red eye for over six months and there were quite a few times I let the car sit for six or seven weeks and only started it once and I had zero issues. decide that I have no more ethanol, I want to run 93, I can go ahead and upload the 93 tune, flash it while I'm pumping at the gas station, drive away, now I'm running 93 and the 93 tune map, which means I can swap quickly because I have no supercharger and no pulley and belt to change. With the Shelby GT350, just like the Mustang GT and the GT500, if I wanted to be lazy, I could just upload the E85 flex fuel tune and what would happen is when I run out of E85 and I fill it up with 93, I drive around cautiously for 20 to 30 minutes and the computer would automatically learn the tune for 93. So you can run a true flex fuel in a GT350 or GT500. Oh my God, this is crazy. Look at this. Handling for days. Oh my God, it feels so good. Wow, this is crazy. That was the first time I took it past 5,000. Well guys, 
I hope you enjoyed the sound of the Voodoo engine and driving the GT350 a little bit. I know it makes me smile every single time I drive the car. I'm still smiling right now. So let's get back to the topic at hand here, and that's E85 and exactly what you guys are gonna need. I'm gonna put a link in the information box and description below for you guys to get the things that you're gonna need to store some E85 or to help assist you with keeping E85 in your garage or taking it to a drag strip when you want to have a little bit of extra E85 on hand. That green is just so damn sick. I never get tired of it, the green on black, and of course, the Shelby logos that are on the ground that are being transmitted from the mirror. Just so sick, if you ask me. Here is the containers you guys are gonna need. That's the original red container that I purchased for E85, but these right here are the better containers. You can get very similar ones to this, just different colors on Amazon, or you can go to a gas station that sells VP racing fuel or even Sunoco racing fuel. And you can see these are the Sunoco race fuel containers. They come in five gallon and they have a breather cap right here to help you pour it much easier. You can buy this easy pour hose with a cap. Now I don't recommend carrying these containers unless you're putting them in a pickup truck or a van or a car trailer transport or something like that because if you lay these down in your trunk and something hits this spout it'll break off down here ask me how I know you can take this red plug out and you basically just screw it in very easy all in all I've got three containers one is full one has a gallon or so the other one's empty this is also five gallons so I can store 20 gallons of E85 and I sometimes fill them a little higher than five gallons so they really hold about 5.5 right there you have 22 gallons of E85 so I pretty much have enough for a tank and a half and when I do go E85 on the GT350 I'm going to have 22 gallons on hand of E85 plus what's ever in the tank because I don't feel like driving 20 miles to get E85 every single week so I have at least enough here to get me through the month depending on what I'm doing so the GT350 has got a lot of mods coming up guys you're going to really love it I'm so happy and excited for this car it really is an awesome vehicle to own and drive thus far I've had so much fun and I just love the lines I'm going to review this car once it gets a little warmer out but I really do think this is the nicest design uh, the Mustang has ever had. I love the fastback design. Well, I'm hoping you guys learned something today on E85 and ethanol. If I didn't answer a question specifically that you have, comment that question below and I will answer all of your questions. I will do my best to get to everybody's question and answer them all. And I always do that. I take the time every day to go through all my videos and answer questions. So if you guys want to know something else about E85 and it wasn't in the video, put it in the comments below. Also guys, really cool, right there in the bottom of the screen is a website to find and locate E85 near you. I use that website to locate all the different gas stations along the way to North Carolina. Also guys, don't forget to like this video and of course share with everyone if you're stopping in for the first time go ahead and punch that subscribe button lots of content coming and don't forget guys check out the merchandise below this video it supports the channel and as well as the join button you guys can officially join and get exclusive perks for drive with demons when you're a member there are a lot of perks guys like exclusive members only live streams and chats early access to videos wallpapers of the car discounts in the store all kinds of stuff definitely check out that join button below guys and check out my other youtube channels right there on the screen but that's gonna do it guys take care have a great night and i will see all of you on the next upload take care guys and have a great night